What's up everybody, welcome to this quick tips video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to edit your bracketed images. Now when you're in the field and you're shooting a scene with a very bright sky and a dark foreground, the best way to deal with this and get everything nicely exposed is to bracket your images. You can use drop-in filters, that's another popular method, but I prefer, and it's a lot quicker, just shoot the brackets and deal with it later um, because the light is very quickly changing in a lot of situations and it gives you more leeway and material to work with in post. So what we have here is Fairy Glen in Scotland where it was sunset but we didn't really have any light hitting the scene here so I had to take a brighter exposure and I shot three brackets for this where I will use probably this as our middle image and then this one for the sky and this one for the foreground. Over here we have another set of images which are slightly underexposed we can always bring everything back here this was shot with a full frame camera so we do have all the details here and we don't have to worry too much about noise i would probably focus stack this image if i was really doing it the right way but for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to keep things simple and so we have our middle ground everything like i said is very underexposed our shot for the sky and our shot for the foreground. Additionally, what you're gonna need for this tutorial is a copy of Raya Pro. It's a plugin extension for Photoshop. There are many similar type of plugins out there. Some pro photographers come out with their own proprietary panels. They all sort of do the same thing. And what they do is, uh, which I'll be showing you in a second, they will take your darker image or your brighter image and create the masks and uh, do that all automatically within a few seconds and it'll speed up your workflow dramatically. The alternative to this, of course, was HDR programs, which we don't use anymore because it comes out way too processed and you still have noise in the shadows. This is the best way, it takes a little time. Sometimes the mask gets it right and sometimes you have to fix things or paint in some more for the sky or for the foreground. It really varies image to image, but uh, it gets the job done. So let's get started with this image first. I'm gonna kinda zip through all my basic edits and uh, get to the part where we take the brackets into Photoshop and mask them together. Now that I've applied all the basic edits, I synced them as you saw to all the images by highlighting them all, pressing sync, and then made some minor adjustments to make sure that this was the brightest in the foreground, this was the more medium exposed, and this one had a well exposure of the sky. Now we will highlight all these images, right click, go to edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop, and we will jump into Photoshop. One thing to keep in mind when you're taking these bracketed images is to make sure that you do it on a tripod so that there is no movement in between each exposure. You can sort of reline them in post if for some reason you bump the tripod or you're using maybe two exposures from two different sets of brackets. But uh, you want to zoom in first when you get your images in here and then hide and reveal them we can see that between this middle exposure and this brighter exposure, there's a tiny bit of movement here, which we can fix very easily. Between the darker exposure, there actually is a tiny bit, but it's very slight. Um, and we'll probably just align them anyways. So the best way to do this, I prefer to do it by layers. So I will click these two. We're gonna be working with the sky first. So let's take these two, go to edit, go to auto align layers, leave it on auto up here, click OK. And then if we zoom back in, we can see that they are perfectly aligned. Sometimes the auto align doesn't work as good as you would like for whatever reason because it uses an algorithm and you can sort of make sure that just the sky or just the foreground is aligned and you can sort of do that manually. Um, you have to zoom in and move the layer around, but in this case it worked out well for us. Now with these layers aligned, make sure our brightest layer or whatever layer we're not working with is hidden down here at the bottom. Now we will click on our darker layer that we will be using for the sky here. Click on the precision mask panel in the Raya Pro panel here. Um, there are a lot of things here that I don't really know or mess with. I only really use this little area up here, auto dark is what you use when you have the darker exposure, such as for the sky, and you want to mask that into your medium 
exposure right here or auto bright I'll show you in a second when we use our foreground layer um, which is hidden here at the moment so with our dark exposure here selected click on auto dark and it will begin to create the masks now we can see there are six masks that are created at varying degrees of intensity um, it starts off in number one here and if you hide and reveal this you can see that it is darkening the sky but is also darkening the foreground which might be necessary if there are some bright reflections or bright spots but in this case I don't really think I want to do that so I might go down to two and you can sort of see the visual representation of the mask here and you can see the first one has the foreground because it's sort of gray and then anything two and lower is only really affecting the sky or parts of the sky so that looks pretty good to me and sometimes it'll look better than others depending on how bright or how you shot your brackets and you might have to do some manual masking in here but looks like it's working out good for us so then with that selected make sure you have your uh, selection made over here you can always go back and see what the other ones look like which is pretty helpful but we will stick with two and then click on the select button so now we have our sky masked in if you'd want to paint in even more of the sky you can always hold the control key and click on the mask and everything that is selected in there will show up and then you can take the pen tool and paint in a little bit more if you wish but in this case I'm gonna and also for the sake of simplicity I'm gonna leave it alone and then we will click these two layers and then go to merge visible so now the darker image and the mid image the mid-level exposure have become one the the foreground isn't too bad to be honest so sometimes I will just use the sky darkening step of this and then brighten this in either dodging and burning or in Lightroom but just for the sake of showing you this technique I'm going to use the brighter exposure for the foreground and as I mentioned it is a little bit not aligned here so we will click these two go to edit auto align layers click OK and you can see it is not perfect sometimes that doesn't really matter and sometimes it'll leave it'll lead to a slight loss of sharpness in your image this is very light but actually you can see the auto align probably did a worse job it's probably now that I think of it it's less aligned than it was when I started out so I'll go to my history tab here and see what that looked like okay never mind actually it was pretty bad when it was not aligned so it did improve it slightly so let's auto align those layers again and we're gonna go ahead with this process and see if it does mess with our uh, image here and make it soft or un slightly out of focus uh, so to speak because the layers are, are not aligned um, but this will happen in some cases and like I said sometimes I'll throw away that bright exposure and just bring it up in Lightroom so we open our Raya Pro tab precision mask panel again click auto bright with that layer selected and now we see that it is brightening the foreground but it's brightening some of the sky if we look at the mask we don't really want to affect the sky because the sky is pretty perfect as it is so maybe we'll just use the third option here and just brighten the shadows a tiny bit to be honest this isn't really worth doing because there isn't really any harsh shadows but just for the sake of the tutorial I will use it click select and now we have our two layers which look pretty good to me we'll go to layer merge visible and now those three images have become one pretty well exposed image here this of course wouldn't be the last step I would dodge and burn or an effect play with some of the uh, maybe content aware fill some distracting elements here add vignette all that stuff but we do have a perfectly even image here to begin our work so I will actually combine the brackets at the, as the first step or technically the second step after basic Lightroom adjustments so let's go back into Lightroom just to see what that looks like now looking at our mid exposure here 
you can see that it wasn't really that bad of a starting point. There are ways that you could deal with this and stay fully in Lightroom, maybe by adding a mask here with a uh, gradient a luminance rain range adjustment here, and it'll only affect the super bright areas. But there are pros and cons with that method, as, are, as there are using the bracketed exposure method. So it's really up to you and it's really up to the image itself. But we can see that especially compared to some of these darker images, we definitely brought up the foreground. And if you look at the brighter one, we definitely brought down the sky so you can see all these colors and textures going on here. So of course, like I said, I would probably go into the contrast, tone curve, and so on and so forth. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that is good as an example. So let's go to our second image here. I'm going to breeze through these starting edits and then bring these into Photoshop. With those basic edits done, we will select all the images, go to edit, open as layers in Photoshop. Just like last time, we will take a look at our layers here, our brackets, zoom in and see how the aligning is alignment is looking. So there seems to be no real movement in between the mid and the overexposed layer. But the darker exposure has a tiny bit of movement that we will fix there. So let us begin with this time we'll start with the brighter exposure. And actually looking at it, to be honest, there really isn't that much movement. So to save a step, we'll skip the alignment part there. So we'll have that selected. We'll go to our Raya Pro Precision Mask panel. We're going to be brightening, remember. So go to the Auto Bright button. Now looking at our created masks here, because this was such a dark image, we might have to use the first one because it does have a lot of shadows that we need to brighten. So I'm liking number one here and it also fixes what we had going on in the clouds. That's also a good thing. So select that. Select these two layers go to merge visible and now we have our brightened foreground the sky in this case actually isn't too bad um, I could probably just fix this in Lightroom like sometimes I do but for the sake of using this tutorial to be honest if I run it through Raya Pro it's really only gonna do some of these areas here but uh, you know we're here now so let's just see what it does So of course, number one is always our kind of more intense mask. We definitely don't need to darken the foreground again after we just brightened it. So let's stay away from that one. And it's just bringing down a little bit, bringing those rays down a tiny bit, I believe using something like three. Using something like three is more than enough. So I'll select that and then select these two layers, merge visible. And we have turned that very under exposed image into a medium exposed image. And just like last time, I will normally take this through a whole bunch of other editing steps, but let's jump into Lightroom and see how far we came. This is our middle exposure here way too dark down in this area. The sky isn't too bad actually. And then we are here now. And then of course we'll add contrast and all those other things to it. So that is why shooting brackets is a very powerful technique. I hope you learned something in this quick tips video about using bracketed exposures that you can incorporate into your own editing workflow. Don't hesitate to leave a comment or a question below if you need more clarification on some of this process. Be sure to like and subscribe for more photography tutorials and travel content.